Okay guys, I am back and this is part two. I am filming these all at the same time. So I'm kind of in that same fiery state I was at the end of part one. And so we're just gonna jump right in. If you have not watched part one, please uh, pause this one, go and watch part one. Um, I will link it up at the top for you. So there's a card that'll pop up that you can click on to go and watch part one. And um, this is part two to that. So I'm not gonna recap, watch that one and then come back to this one. And so in this one, we're gonna be looking at Moses in Exodus chapter 32. So we'll start at verse seven. Now to give you guys a little bit of context, Moses is on Mount Sinai and God is giving him the laws, the rules, the regulations, the requirements. Hey, you brought these, you know, we, I have used you to bring these people out of Egypt. They're here now. And this is what it means to, to live in a kingdom where I am God. These are the rules, these are the requirements, the laws. And so he's giving all these rules, these laws, and it's taking some time. And so the people are kind of like, okay, well, Moses went up this mountain and he didn't come back down and I don't know what happened to him. So let's just move on, let's do something else. And so they decide to build this golden calf. And that's kind of where we're starting at, at verse seven. So again, Exodus chapter 32, verse seven, it says, then the Lord said to Moses, go down because your people whom you brought up out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff necked people. Now leave me alone so that in my anger, I may burn against them, that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. Listen to what he just said. He tells Moses, let me kill them. I'm gonna kill them. I, 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 I just brought them out of Egypt. I brought them out of 400 years of slavery. I delivered them. I showed great signs and wonders so that they would know me, that they would know who I am, that they would have a personal relationship with me. I bring them out and because I'm taking too long, they decide I'm gonna make my own gods. We're gonna worship him instead. And this is after they've committed to a relationship with me. The, the people of Israel said, we, we will obey your commandments. We will do as you have asked. And then just a few minutes later, just a few days or a couple months later, they're like, oh, okay, well, whatever. Look, we, we, we got other things to do. This is taking too long. Let's just go back to what we were doing in Egypt. And so he says, I, I'm going to just eliminate them from the picture and I'll, I'll make a great nation out of you. Now, if you're a person who who is selfish um, and who doesn't care about others. Okay, Lord, <laughs> let's go for it. Uh, make a great nation out of me. But look at Moses' response, verse 11. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he has brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger, relent, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servant Abraham and Isaac and Israel to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And I will give your descendants all this land I promised them and it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Look at Moses' heart for a people who were clearly lost. Clearly lost. Saved and brought out by God and still clearly lost. Moses says, Lord, I don't want to be a great nation. It's not my desire. Lord, my desire is that your name would be uplifted, that people from nations across nations across nations would not look at you and say, oh, he brought them out so that he could destroy them. No, God, I won't have it. That's not the God that I serve. I know you are the God of Abraham and, and, and of Isaac and of Jacob. You are the God of relationships, a God who loves us, a God who makes promises to us, who saves us, who chooses us. You are that God. And I won't have them say anything else about you. Lord, please relent. I don't want to be a great nation. I don't want it to be about me. I don't want to be selfish. I want you to relent. Please don't destroy them. Lord, yes, they're a lost people, but please don't destroy them. That is the type of heart that we as followers of Jesus should have about people who are lost. 
And how do we say that? Instead of saying it with our mouths, how do we say that with our actions? We go and we seek after them. We find them, we search for them. We, we, we're trying to bring them into a relationship with Jesus. You know, we tell them, look, we know that you're messed up. We're messed up too. We know that you're lost. We're lost too. We know that you've made mistakes. We've made mistakes too. We are still making mistakes, but there is a God who forgives them and who loves you in spite of them. And I just want you to know that God, because to deny that God is to burn in hell for like as long as you can think of and then longer because it's eternity. We have to have this type of heart. And I think that God chooses these type of people for a reason. He knew the heart of Moses. He knew the heart of David who, who refused to touch Saul. He says, I, I don't want to touch God's anointed. Though he tried to kill me, though he tried to slay me, though he's trying to hurt me, though I've done nothing wrong to him. I have no desire to hurt him. He was the type of person who had no desire to hurt his enemies. He, he wanted. Now, yes, he called on God and said, God, help me and slay my enemies. But he's, he's also the same David that says, I, I won't do that. He's also the same David that when brought to his attention that he was wrong, he, he falls on the ground and he says, Lord, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I messed up. Lord, please. These are the type of people that God chooses. These are the type of hearts that God wants. He wants the type of hearts that are not selfish and conceited and, and, and so wrapped up in themselves that we forget about other people, that we're not willing to humble ourselves and become what he needs us to be, what he desires for us to be. And so we can see here in Exodus that Moses is the type of man that says, God, I don't want it to be about me. It is, it is not my desire for my name to be great. It is not my desire for, for me to be the father of many nations. It is my desire that your name will be lifted up. It is my desire that the, that the lost and, and the, the people who, who are broken and torn and misplaced and misguided, that they would come to know you, that they would come to find you. And that can't happen if they are destroyed. That can't happen if you, do, if you kill them right now. Lord, please don't do, please don't do it, Lord. Please don't do it. Y'all, we man we gotta have that type of heart i mean it's it's so sad because there's so many people who are broken and lost and the and the truth is that sin breaks you you people dress it up and they put makeup on it and they try to make it look nice and yes it can be fun for some time but the truth is that it breaks you the burden of sin breaks you and you gotta know that there's a bomb that there's something that can fix that that there's something that can that can heal that that there's something that doesn't just cover it up and put tape on it but that can make it new that can make all things new and, and if we're not going out and we're not telling people about a god who can do that then what are we doing i mean really what are we doing i just ugh, it just eats me up inside because i see it i see ministries and churches and people who will collect your money, who will collect your tithes and offering, who will collect you, who will put you in every auxiliary and position and place in the universe so that you feel important and special. And it's all about you. It's not about you progressing and growing and, and learning so that you can go out and pull others in, just like you were pulled in. And and it, it I just... Uh, I'm at that place where I just can't, I can't be comfortable with that no more. And, and I think we become so um, politically correct that we don't want to hurt people's feelings. We don't want to tell them the truth, the truth about what we see, the truth about what we know. And it, and it's, it's smothering the fire and it's smothering the, what, what we should be doing. It's smothering that. Oh, Lord, please. Um, I want to look at uh, Matthew chapter 14. And I'm going to read verse 13 and 14. But to give you some understanding, John the Baptist has just been beheaded. John the Baptist is Jesus's cousin. They would have, it doesn't necessarily talk about it in the Bible, but they would have grown up together. They would have known each other. They would have been close. They would have been, they're relatives. They would have loved each other. And so Jesus finds out that, that John the Baptist has been beheaded and he is heartbroken. He's heartbroken. He's devastated. You can only imagine how devastated it's going to hurt his family. It's going to hurt his mom. And he's hurt. And look at what he does. It says in verse 13, 
So Matthew chapter 14, verse 13, when Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. I just want to be by myself. I need a minute to process this. I need a moment to, to get through this. I need a moment to get past this hurt and past this pain and past this suffering. I just need a moment alone. I just need a moment. And it says, hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. Jesus gets no moment. But look at how he responds. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. You just got some of the worst news that you can get. He didn't die of cancer. He was beheaded. And then his head handed on a platter to someone at a party for all to see. He wasn't just be killed. He was martyred. He was um, embarrassed. He was uh, degraded and discarded. He, and Jesus finds out about this and he says, I just need a second. I just need a second. I, I need a moment for myself. I just need to get a, a moment for myself. But when he sees that these people have followed him, it wasn't about him. He could say, I see you and I have compassion for you. And because of that, I can lay down this hurt, this weight, this loss, and I can heal you. Can we, can we say that? Can we say that we're willing to lay down our desires and our hurts and our feelings and our frustrations and the things that we want so that we can have compassion for others? Um, to finish this off, we're going to jump over to Philippians chapter 2, and, and I'm going to be done. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, this is one of my fav absolute favorite, favorite, favorite scriptures in the Bible. And it's, it's a poem about Jesus and about the life that he lived and about the legacy of his ministry. And it says this in um, Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 5. It says, in your relationships with another, with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient even to death, death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that in the name of, of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. He didn't care about himself. He didn't care about himself. He laid down his deity. He laid down who he was, what he was. He laid it down so that he could become a servant, a God who would come in the flesh, in the, in the sinful flesh and wash the feet of filthy, sinful men. It wasn't about him. It wasn't about him. Jesus understood it wasn't about him. And though he was hurting and he was in pain when John died, though he was hurting and he was in pain when, when those blood droplets came pouring out of his head and he said, God, please, 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 please let this cup pass for me. Please, if, if, if there's any other way, please, please, please. But not my will, not my will let your will be done. Not my will, let your will be done. Not my will, let your will be done. Y'all, how many of us can say that? Not my will, let your will be done. It's not about the houses and the cars and the money and the clothes and the savings account. It's not about that. It's about seeking and saving the lost. But we are so caught up in living our lives and in becoming rich and in doing what we want to do and being seen in the church and, and, and doing whatever it is that we want to do that we're we desolate our relationships they're empty they're barren we, we people people barely believe that we're christians let alone that we love god and that we love them half of us people come to us and they tell us something and we can't even keep our own mouth shut about it we just going girl let me tell you what such and such said to me come on now that's love that's love that's how we seek and save the lost it's a heart it's heartbreaking and it should be heartbreaking if it's not heartbreaking for you you need a you need a relationship check and and it's just the truth there's not really another way to put it you need a relationship check we all need a relationship check on a daily basis on an hourly basis on a on a on a second by second basis we all need a relationship check 
and, and if the life that you're living is not the type of life that resembles Jesus's life, that he would lay it down for sinners and prostitutes and drug dealers and, 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 and you and me and, and sexaholics and alcoholics and, and, and gamblers and I mean, just pedophiles and just the, the, all of us of us the the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst which is me and you we are so we are so off the mark we're so we're so off the mark and um <sighs> thank you lord for your spirit for your word for for you for who you are thank you for teaching us today lord i pray that you would just not allow us to walk away the same please don't let us just be the same people going back to doing the same stuff god please put a fire a fire and a zeal in our hearts to pursue what you want us to pursue to seek and save people because that's what it's about people not our name not how fancy we are not how many people know us not how many times we get to preach in a month not how many people get to hear us sing our riffs it's not about us God, it's about you and we've forgotten about that that your desire your love is for people to be saved that is what you want Lord please help us to remember that it is not about us it's not about us and God please show us the ways in which you want us to seek and to save the lost open doors make make possibilities show us what you want us to do who you want us to touch bring them lord and and send us and and show us where to go and how to do this in jesus name we pray amen thank you for watching and i just i pray that the holy spirit did what he does amen